Putin's exclusive interview and Ukraine's change of commander-in-chief will indicate that the Russia-Ukraine war may be coming to an end. On February 9, Putin accepted an exclusive interview with American independent media person Carlson. He said that Russia has not yet achieved the goals of the special military operation against Ukraine, one of which is denazification, which means banning all neo-Nazi movements. Ukraine started the war in Donbass and Russia aims to end it. Zelensky has the freedom to negotiate with Russia. Russia and Ukraine reached a consensus in 2022 that Ukraine would legally ban neo-Nazism. The negotiations almost ended in 2022, but after the Russian troops withdrew from Kiev, the Ukrainian side abandoned all agreements. Ukraine almost acted as a satellite state of the United States and made the decision to abandon negotiations with Russia at the direction of the United States. Now the United States should correct this mistake. Through various contacts, the Russian side conveyed a message to the American leadership, if you really want to stop the fighting, you should stop the supply of weapons, to Ukraine, everything will be over in a few weeks, that's it, and then you can start negotiate certain conditions. Of course, anyone who thinks Russia will cede Crimea in any negotiations to end the conflict must be crazy. Some people believe that if aid to Ukraine is stopped, the United States will be forced to fight Russia. It's out of the question. Such remarks are purely provocative. Russia is currently defending its own people, itself, its motherland and its common future. Russia does not attack anyone and does not violate Christian values. Putin believes that Russia and Ukraine will reach a consensus sooner or later, and that even if it takes a long time, relations between the two peoples will eventually be restored. This interview clearly demonstrated Putin's intention to end the conflict between Russia and Ukraine through negotiations, and disclosed Russia's main conditions in the negotiations. 1. Ukraine bans the neo-Nazi movement. Specifically, it means that it will no longer be anti-Russian and will no longer oppose Russians in Ukraine. 2. On the territorial issue, Crimea is out of the question. In Ukraine, on February 8, Ukrainian President Zelensky dismissed Zelensky as the commander-in-chief of the Ukrainian army and replaced him with Sersky. Zelensky said in a statement that the mission in 2022 is different from the mission in 2024. Therefore, a decision has been made to change battlefield tactics and strategy as everyone must change and adapt to the new reality, but also to win together. Zelensky demanded additional munitions, drones and air defense systems from the EU, vowing to retaliate against Russia. Zelensky recently requested another military conscription, but Zelensky vetoed it because it would further aggravate the war-weary and anti-war sentiments of the Ukrainian people. On the US side, US and NATO officials reiterated support for Ukraine's continued war against Russia. The US Senate rejects a deal to fund Ukraine. US National Security Advisor Sullivan said, the United States must step forward and provide some level of resources so that Ukraine can have artillery, air defense systems and other needed capabilities. Judging from the remarks made by Ukraine and the United States and Europe, it seems that although the will to fight is still strong, support for the war in terms of soldiers and funds has weakened. Therefore, wars tend to be more non-contact warfare modes such as drones, missiles, and artillery, and the intensity of wars has also weakened. As the main force of the US military continues to gather in the Asia-Pacific direction, the United States is likely to instruct Ukraine to contact Russia, and Russia and Ukraine will enter a situation of fighting and negotiating at the same time. The Russo-Ukrainian war is likely to come to an end.